Okay, I was uh, planning to apologize for uh, the last episode. Um, perhaps I shouldn't have uh, spoken about Israel slash Palestine because, eh, you know, it's not really my thing and it's been done to death and, eh. And, eh. So I'm not going to apologize. Let's just say I won't do it again. Maybe it'll be done once a year. And then I brought my friend uh, Abdul in and I didn't contextualize who is Abdul, uh, what credibility has Abdul got, why am I bringing Abdul in, why must I listen to Abdul? So I apologize, I apologize for that as well. I should know better. So Abdul, Abdul's just one of the cleverest gu um, guys I've ever known. Just very clever. Um, he's got master's degrees in God knows what. And um, he just uh, seems to know stuff. So, um, and Abdul, Abdul, he's, just, he's staying with us. And if you are watching this on YouTube, that's Abdul's bed. And I can testify he's been here for almost three weeks. And nothing has happened in that bed except... Uh, um, he's been sleeping. Um, we, we, I, I kinda don't, we're not going to talk about masturbation or anything. That's very personal. Not going to go into that. So, Abdul, thank you very much. Um, Abdul, uh, last, uh, last episode, uh, talking about Israel, uh, it, it wasn't handled as, as best as it could from our point, uh, from our part. Would you agree? I think you should have been a bit more prepared and done some pre-reading. Pre-reading, eh? Yeah. But that's the thing. I do do pre-reading. Who remembers all the... Who, who can remember stuff? Honestly, who can remember things? It would be better to contextualize your argument. You went okay. all over the place. All over the place. All, should I delete the episode? Probably not. I think since your recent fame on TikTok, you should isolate ah, videos of it. I'm on TikTok. But I tell you, TikTok... I'm going to tell you now. TikTok is ageist. It's against people like me. In order to... In order to take a pre-recorded video, like I do on YouTube, and then put it onto TikTok, that is something else. Abdul, you worked it out and you helped me to do it, but can you just agree with me that they, they don't exactly make it easy, right? Well, yeah, because TikTok is not always so compatible, right? So I think because like it's not owned by Google, they wouldn't make it easy. I think TikTok's owned by China. Isn't it? Something and in someone, you, you, not the country, but somebody in China. Yeah, and Google is owned by, obviously, an American company. Sure. The, the, I, we, we, we successfully did it two days ago, but I'm going to have to do it. You're going to have to do it again with me for me to remember. There are so many steps to, to jump through. It's just, it's just unbelievable. It's amazing what you can come up with when you're bored during load shedding. Wow. Anyway, so... TikTok, do you think TikTok is, is a, you think it's a good idea for me to be on TikTok? Because it's an audience that wouldn't necessarily be, be aware of me. So it was a good move? I think it is, but I think you need to reframe your TikTok. Like, for example, in some of your videos, you need to add like a title, like old man rants on TikTok. Oh, be a bit self-deprecating. Yeah. Nobody is here to listen to your opinions on TikTok. They just oh. want flashy images, sexy women. They want to see like Where am I going quick to, sexy woman. Happen. I mean, it's me for crying in a bucket. Well, maybe if you take your shirt off and rant, they may like you. <laughs> no, that, that'll be a dis that'll be a disaster. But one of the things I wanted to ask you, um, Abdul, one of the things that you've been pointing out since you've been with us for for two and a half weeks, you'll see a woman, a Muslim woman in a hijab, but then she'll be wearing tight pants showing her her backside of tachas, right? Yeah. And then you like you dumbfounded. This is hypocritical. But isn't it a personal thing? If some woman wants to wear a hijab and she wants to wear her denims, can't she do it? I mean, why? Uh, maybe you're, I don't know, maybe you, I think maybe you're in the wrong to criticize. I guess it's a personal thing. Under the South African constitution, yeah, of course she can dress in the way that but she why wants. Are you bothered? why are you a little bit bothered about it? You find it a bit hypocritical. Before we go to my opinion, can I tell you a really funny story that involves this whole thing? Okay. That blew up this whole hypocritical situation. Okay. So there was this woman, right? She was a tenant of my sister at one stage. and this A tenant of your sister? Yeah. Of where? My, um, Durban, Dubai, where? Let's not specify, okay? Oh, dear. Isn't, so, but isn't it relevant? Yeah, I'll say somewhere in South Africa. Okay. So, <clears throat> so this woman had told my sister that she was like half Palestinian, half something else, and that she was Muslim, right? Yes. Let's call her... Shanaz, for example. Okay, Shanaz, yeah? Yeah, Shanaz. Shanaz. Shanaz, yeah. Not Shanaz, like a nose, but Shanaz. Shanaz, okay. Yeah. So, 
this woman um, had told my sister that she was like applying for refugee status and she was working at some sort of fisheries company. And um, it turns out that this woman was having multiple men over. And she always said that this was like a, you know, business colleague or something like that. Well, it is. A and um, it precipitated in them finding her on some escort platform. And um, her husband's co-worker called and they figured out what she was doing. And there was a whole Oh, incident. she was a sex worker, right? She was actually. But a was sex- she a Palestinian Wait, person? But, but what's, for relevant, what's relevant? What's relevant? What's relevant? is that she would wear the scarf and tight jeans and clothes and shit. So I don't know whether people thought she was, she was wearing the hijab. Like, yeah, she was like some sort of Mia Khalifa, I guess, fetish prostitute for people. Mia Khalifa, she's like the, the most famous Islamic porn actress. But I think she's Am not right? actually Muslim. I think she's like I know Lebanese. That, you, gotta, you can't assume that everyone knows who Mia Khalifa is. She just wears a hijab, I guess. So. But Mia Khalifa is this Muslim um, t- porn star, right? I don't think she's actually Muslim. I think she's like Lebanese Christian or something. I'm not but sure. But she like, but in her stories, in her porn yeah. movies, she she she, put, she, put, she portrays herself as a Muslim porn star. Yeah, she provides the best package in a, in a hijab that you can find anywhere. Okay, course, but yeah. you, you assume that not everyone knows who Mia Khalifa is. I, I mean, I only learned about Mia Khalifa like recently. Yo! You can't have your... I don't have every porn actress at my fingertips knowing everybody. Well, anyway, let me be fair to you and let's go back to my opinion on the whole thing. Yes. Well, if you go to a country like France, you're not even allowed to wear the hijab, right? Okay. So you could basically wear like every other Islamic garment, but you can't wear the hijab, right? Can't wear the hijab. Yeah, so... No, but I think that in France, they just mean you can't cover completely. Well, just your eyes and your nose are visible. Well, you can't wear a yarmulke either. You've got to wear a cap. For no, example. there's no law against wearing a yarmulke in, in France. No, you could put the yarmulke on, then a cap. Are you, you're not allowed to walk around with your yarmulke? Yeah. Are you sure about that? Yes, I'm sure. And then even... I don't know um, about that. Because uh, a religious... And then they C'est even, la vie. So then they even have uh, this new law, I think, that was passed in court that like religious symbols shouldn't be worn in court because it distracts the judge in France from making yeah from making like a neutral decision in France okay yeah. what does this got to do with when you see a woman outside the virgin active with her hijab on and she's wearing a pair of tight denims um i just think it's very hypocritical from like a muslim perspective because they're always fighting for like hijab rights in other countries uh, but it's not necessarily for women wanting to wear the whole outfit according to like Islamic Sharia law because there you're not supposed to like show your bodily form and stuff So it's pretty hypocritical if you ask me But the thing is that in the, say that individual person that you saw yeah. outside the virgin active um, She may be a Muslim woman, right? It, it's a little is bit... it her responsibility to fight for the rights of Muslims throughout the world. It's a little bit like Monty Python It's like you know, I don't want to fight for transgenders, but I want to fight for the right for somebody to be a transgender. You know that movie, Life of Brian? Yes, yes, yeah. okay. <laughs> it's a little bit like that. So, I mean, if they're doing it from that perspective and they just state it clearly, well, then go ahead. I actually think that, like, if they wore, like, the proper um, clothes that were really fashionable, they would look awesome because it goes so well with the hijab. Because now Muslim women don't have to dress around, dress around like Taliban looking subjects <clears throat> covered in like blue sheets and stuff. They have actually really good fashion. There's like uh, many different houses like Kashka, there's Zuhair Murad, there's those different types of like fashion, like Gucci, for example. But, th- yeah. now, but now those fancy fashion houses that you've mentioned, yeah. are you saying they design full on hijabs like... The top to bottom, the whole attire. Well, hijab is just the head cover. Hijab is just the head cover. Yes, there's caftans and What stuff. do you call the whole thing? Uh, I, I mean, like, there's different parts of the outfit, right? So, What I is mean, the whole outfit referred to as? I can't I remember. Th- I thought I knew this. I can't really remember. I mean, there's... When you wear the hijab that just covers your head but not your face, that's called the hijab. Yeah, I think it's something what, like that. Can, but you'll never see a, a Muslim woman wearing the thing where you only see her eyes... But then the rest of her body, she's wearing a pair of denims. You won't see that. If yeah, she's wearing an outfit where you, when, if you only see the ah, oh, she's wearing the whole outfit, yeah. top to bottom. What do you call that whole outfit? Um, I guess you just call it Islamic wear. I don't think I it's don't a know. whole outfit. It's I'm sure it's got a whole name, yourself. man. But the actual funny thing is that, do you remember, like, 
I was looking on YouTube just in you know, a like a random scroll yes. and we found this like video with like a Muslim woman in um in a yearbook and it was just her face with like a whole face covered and you could just see her eyes and below that she's written a line for the yearbook you can't see me John Cena Yeah but that but yeah but that was a meme I don't think that was a legitimate real real thing Well right next to her there was an Asian dude with like really small eyes and he said and and his line below the picture was I can actually see Nah eh. I, I don't know. I, you know, I, I don't know. All I know is, in my opinion, um, I think it's a very personal thing. I think if you, like, for example, you can get a Jewish person yeah. who, a, a man, is wearing a yarmulke, the skull cap, yeah. um, but he's not wearing the tzitzit. Of course. Uh, or, or you can get a, a Jewish man who's not wearing a yarmulke at all, but he may still be very devout. He may be very religious. I, is it, I, I think it's a very personal thing. I think each to their own. Hmm? Am I wrong? I guess the concept is that like your level of observance is up to you, right? Is that what you're trying to say? Yeah, but I think what I, what, what maybe what, what I'm discovering now, yeah. perhaps you've you've grown up in a Muslim community. Yeah. Is the Muslim community among themselves very judgmental of each other? Everyone's looking at each other. You oh, you're not doing this. You do you're doing this correctly. You're doing that. You're doing that wrong. Is it is, is a lot? Is there a lot of judgment? Did um, you grow up with a lot of judgment? Yeah, of course. There's a lot of judgment, but m- women judge women way worse than men judge men. Okay. Obviously. Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. I mean, like, you could be a really ugly guy, and you he'd have like a really hot wife. Yes. Yeah, but then his wife will be like totally judged by other people. Hang on, his wife. Yeah. The attractive one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of would course. be judged by other people. Yeah, and she like. From has, what way? In what way judged? I mean, like, because if she's good looking, she's got to constantly, like, be modest according to everybody. Okay. Yeah, and um, at the same time, like, she has to constantly maintain the fact that she's good looking. So it's like the modesty versus good looking thing. Okay. Yeah. Now, in South Africa, yeah. there's this impression, there's this perception. That the relationship between the Jewish community and the Muslim community is very friendly and cordial, is that is that um, um, is that uh, not really the case, and it's just a facade? I wouldn't say that at all. I mean, like looking at the media, the perception is that they're not very friendly because of the whole Palestine issue. But on a social level, just um, in business, in day to day life. Um, you know, you as a Jewish person, I've always shopped at the Oriental Plaza, for example. I've, I deal with Muslim customers every day. There's never any issues. Yeah, I guess that we maintain quite peaceful relations among yeah. each other. In yeah. fact, in Houghton, in Johannesburg, there's a synagogue and a mosque literally right next to each other. And then the one festival, the one Muslim festival that didn't have enough parking, the synagogue, the West Street synagogue, gave them... Lent them their parking. For a nominal fee, though. No! No, no fee at all. They lent them their parking. Fee free parking. In Norwood, in Norwood. Wow. Next to the, next to the, um, there's a halal, there's a halal Nando's. Next to the halal Nando's is a Jewish bookshop, Kolel. Next to, I don't think you get that in any other part of the world. Do you think you'll see that? I don't know. I'm, I'm kind of thinking of an angle here. Maybe they go to like the mosque just to show off to the Jews that they're going, and the Jews in turn go off to shul to show. No, off no, 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 going. no! You you just being silly. You just being silly. I realize this is not a a hundred percent. This is a bit of a frivolous show, but we yeah. but we don't. We you can't just make things up. You can't. You cannot just make things up. But the funniest thing that did happen the one day, and it was a coincidence. I don't remember the exact festival, or um, it was a Friday afternoon at maybe at one o'clock. All the Muslims were coming out of the mosque yeah. there in Houghton, and I was driving past at exactly the same time. And all the Jews were coming out of Shul at exactly the same time. And all the, the Muslims and the Jews were coming out at the same time. And I just thought it was a moment to, to save her. In fact, it was the moment for that famous um, photographer, David Goldblatt, yeah. to take a photo. It was just something else. It, it was, I thought it was really special. They're pretty peaceful, I guess, in the way that they treat each other. It's just the whole BDS issue, I think, that, that you know, threatens them. But I would say that there's nothing in Jewish law that's against, Muslim, but against Muslims. But in Sharia law, they are inherently anti-Semitic things. 
Yeah, but is, is there a difference between Muslim? Is there a difference between Islam and Sharia? Isn't no. Sharia just higher grade, like a no? The a, law, a, the a, law, a, a extra in, level. No, the law in Islam is called Sharia. Oh, really? Yeah. So then, how come some countries practice very strict Sharia law, where they don't want to, they don't want to educate uh, women and children and, and young girls? Um, how does that? And but then you'll get other Muslim countries that do educate. Uh, woman and, and young girls. What? What? Uh, explain well, that I mean, to me. Is that just taking Sharia law too literally? If you think of the world's major religions like Christianity and, for example, Judaism, right? And and Islam's also major. No, no, no. I mean, I will use those two first of all. Okay. Um, they're like maybe three thousand or more years old, or two thousand years old in the case of Christianity, right? And then uh, we, they, we 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 talking. We're like. 5,700 and something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They've yeah. had their reformations, right? Now, Islam's pretty young. Islam's like only 1,400 and something years old. So they're having probably their reformation. We're very lucky because we're getting to witness their reformation right now. Reformation as in? Like, I mean, like, you know, the Christians actually have something in their history called the Reformation, where like they fought against the Catholic Church. In Judaism, there were actually reformations as well. I mean, the most recent one created like the Reform Synagogue, for example. Okay. Yeah. So Islam's probably needing to go under its reformation. I think by the year 2050, if I'm correct, the population of Muslims on the planet will be about 25%. So like one in four people will be Muslim. Okay. Yeah. So there's going to have to be a way to maintain what they do with the rest of the world and the interpretation is not very compatible with the rest of the world when it's in its like most pure form or most strict interpretation so to answer your question as to why they're so different i would say it's a combination of like trying to integrate into the modern global society combined with also the cultural facets of where that religion is like for example in the turkic nations or central asian nation they like to drink alcohol, right? Like Kazakhstan, Turkey, and so on. But like in other countries, like Afghanistan, you obviously wouldn't find that, and you'd be punished for that. But even recently, like the UAE is starting to be more lenient with alcohol as well. So, yeah. Okay, but a country like Afghanistan, yeah, in the year 2050, what, 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 what they're going to be? What's going to be happening there? I think they'll be more integrated into global society. They may be strict, but a lot of problems that these countries are facing is that they have a young demographic that wants to be globally integrated, and they also have a huge population of educated women that also need to be integrated, and those are world trends. So Afghanistan right now, because of the Americans leaving, are really backwards. But, I mean, I got a hope for the future that eventually the women get more representation and take over. I know you're not a psychologist, yeah. But like, you know, what is the the, the th under where where does logic and just humanity come into play? So, say you the the Taliban government um, in Afghanistan. Like, what is the the, the, the thinking uh, depriving women and young girls of their education? Like, what, is there just no logic and they're just blindly following Sharia law? Are, are, is there no sympathy? Is there no empathy? Is there no just pure, just logic? Um, I know you're not a mind reader. I know you don't live in Afghanistan. But uh, what is your theory? Like, what are, what are they thinking? Like, there might be something in Judaism that I might not follow because it just doesn't work for me. But they seem to be very strict and it, it's, they, they reckon it's working for them. Well, I'll explain trends in Afghanistan. Like, before they had the war in Russia, Afghanistan was an extremely liberal country. Like, you would have women wearing mini skirts, So they were quite modern, right? Uh, it's very similar to the case in Iran before the revolution. Now, um, what Afghanistan also, what was not considered there um, during the Russian war was like the Islamic angle. And obviously, the way that Islamic angle became much more amplified was because America was trying to give America America was trying to give Russia its own Vietnam, according to um, Spigniew Brzezinski, uh, who recently passed away a few years ago. So I think uh, they, with Saudi Arabia, decided to fund uh, this operation so that they could fight um, 
the Russians there to the bring Mujahideen. Them. Yeah, the Mujahideen. And the CIA was heavily involved as well. So what happened is we're witnessing the culmination of trends of people who have historically been supported as reactionaries against the Soviet Union. And now America could no longer sustain its presence there. So the people that were like left behind that had the biggest presence and following in the country were the Taliban because the Taliban's a reactionary against Western okay. hegemony, for example, in that part of the world. But like think about when people when colonial powers leave, right? There's many different ways in which this could happen. So this is just a very similar manner when a colonial power has left. And their thinking is that they need to follow strict Sharia in order to get things done. There was a period like this as well in the 90s and 2000s. Yes. Yeah. Um, but they won't be able to maintain it for long. Such strict interpretations, I don't think, will be able to be maintained Okay, Okay, let's, let's, it's now 2023. Yeah. How long are they going to... What do you guess? How long is this going to carry on for this this very strict interpretation of Sharia law? Um, I mean, the country right now is really starving. They've got to make agreements with other countries. So I don't think they'll fall into the Western ambit of influence. I think they've got about $40 billion in assets currently frozen by Western nations. So they've already started to make agreements with like other other powers, like for example, Russia and China. So they're going to fall into that kind of like resource ambit. But China works in a way where like they don't really care what they do as long as you give them what they want. So there'll probably be like a gradual social change that so happens what are, from within. Are 2030 or are we still going to be sitting? Is Afghanistan going to still be like this? You really want me to give predictions all the no, time. No, just what do you think, man? What's your um, gut feel? My gut feeling when what exactly would happen? What would you like what, to see? Well, when will when will they loosen things and allow uh, young women and young girls to be educated? Well, I don't think that would take very long. Within Iran proper, when their iron fist came up, I mean, if you look at Iran now, since 1979, uh, there are more women than men who have education. So okay. 1979 until now is what? Like around, you want to say... 50 years, so I would okay. say I would give it around maybe 30 to 40 years. Wow. But I so think it may like, be... That's two or three generations But you see, I think, I think it may even be sooner because uh, in Iran, what had happened was they didn't have this kind of like world that we live in right now that's so interconnected, right? Yeah, global. Um, yeah. Uh, but I think now with more access to things... I think it will happen. Afghanistan is in, a, is in a part of the world where a lot of resources are. And if they want to benefit, they're going to need educated people from within the country. And obviously, the men can't keep up with that. So they will eventually realize that they need to like put women to work in some way. It'll start off as like a clandestine way, <coughs> excuse me, when women are actually working. And then eventually, gradually, it will become formal. I mean, yeah, like kind of like how China had like hardline interpretations under Mao. And then the factions that came after Mao, they decided to open up like under Henry Kissinger and Richard Nixon. So I think something like that would happen eventually. There'll be a cold relations with the West and then eventually they will warm up gradually. Sure. Maybe 30 years. Okay. Yeah. Well, so what, I'll be I'll be 80 or 90 years old. I hope I'm around to see all this. We'll see. I'm hoping it's sooner, actually. Yeah. yeah. Okay, Abdul, thank you very much. Thank you.